The Blended Video Series is based on an excellent sermon series entitled Blended, presented by Pastor Lance Lowell of Neighborhood Church in Modesto, California. This sermon series is a call for unity in the body of Christ. The theme of this video series is found in the Gospel of John. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Pastor Lowell gave me his sermon notes and encouraged me to design a video series. The episodes that you will see are a collaboration between Pastor Lowell and myself. I hope you enjoy this production. Sad to say that church schisms are on the rise in the United States of America. More and more people have lost sight of the biblical mandate for unity in the body of Christ. Jesus prayed that we may be one so that we might be his witnesses to the world. Tom S. Rayner, an American writer and researcher, wrote that most church splits focus on the pastor, even though the pastor might be only a scapegoat. He also wrote that church splits typically originate from power groups in the church seeking to wield greater power. Church splits eat away at the health of the body of Christ until the windows are shuttered and the doors are locked. Disunity can and does cause damage to the church. But the focus of unity throughout the New Testament is so much bigger than simple congregational squabbling. The Apostle Paul had a problem in the Corinthian church. The congregation was filled with jealousy and quarreling over whose doctrine should be followed. Some declared that they followed Paul while others claimed to follow Apollos. Paul sternly rebuked the Corinthian church for acting as unchanged men who failed to understand the importance of unity in their church. Why must Paul repair the Corinthian church? Don't they understand that he is not the leader, nor is Apollos? But the church is built on Jesus Christ. How should the Corinthian church view the ministers of the gospel? Paul answered this question in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. So then, men ought to regard us as servants of Christ and as those entrusted with the secret things of God. Paul urged the Corinthian congregation to view Apollos and himself as the servants of Jesus Christ, who have been entrusted with the gospel. Are we not all servants of Jesus Christ? This doesn't answer the question. Greater clarity comes when we explore the Greek word used 
by Paul in this verse. He used the Greek word hoperetes to describe his servanthood to Christ. This word can be translated as under rower. Paul considered Apollos and himself as under rowers of Christ. To us today, this image does not carry the same impact it did during the days of Paul. On a Roman warship, the underdeck was built with benches on both sides of the boat. These benches spanned most of the length of the ship. The under rowers would sit on these benches holding oars that could reach up to 80 feet in length. In front of the rowers on a raised platform sat the captain giving orders and the drummer setting the cadence for the rowers. For those who have seen the movie Ben-Hur, we have a visual understanding of the duty of the under rower. Never forget the under rower is a slave of the Roman Empire. The Corinthian church understood this one word illustration because members of their congregation might have been survivors of the Roman galleys. The Corinthian church was fracturing along leadership lines. How could the Corinthians survive without rowing together? Paul made it clear. The only agenda that mattered was the orders given by Jesus Christ, their captain. They need to row together or falter as a Christian congregation. Unity is about mission. Rowing together only matters if we're going somewhere. Today, we row for sport or recreation. But during the time frame of the New Testament, rowing was about moving from one place to another. The main goal of rowing was conveyance, not recreation. Rowing together was much more than simple transportation. It could determine life or death. On at least two occasions, the disciples were forced to row together to survive a storm on the Sea of Galilee. But on each occasion, Jesus miraculously calmed the sea. You never know when teamwork and rowing together might save your life. In the New Testament, people who row together have a mission in mind. They have a destination. Paul used this one word illustration to teach the Corinthian church of the importance of unity and mission. The church has a mission to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. And this can only happen if the church rose together in unity. The disunity and schism Paul witnessed in the Corinthian church must be repaired before this church can be part of the mission again. Paul, in Ephesians chapter 4, presented a leadership lesson for all to read. He intertwined unity with mission. He addressed roles. He addressed commitment to each other. He addressed mission. And 
he addressed the consequences of being off mission. Let's consider the great lesson Paul presented to the Ephesian church. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Paul began his instruction by exhorting us to a mission, to a purpose and to a life of serving God. This is an important thing for us to remember because we often forget that we serve God in relationship, not religious rhetoric. The call to kingdom life is a call for us to come out of the darkness of this world into the light with a life of greater freedom and purpose because of his call we have a kingdom life provided for us to live a life with a mission but sometimes we fall short of our call by not living in unity with the body of Christ John Maxwell an American author speaker and pastor said that everything that is valuable is uphill but most people have uphill hopes but downhill habits churches are just like people they have uphill hopes and downhill habits Paul in his leadership lesson is trying to awaken the church from their downhill habits to meet our call in Christ. Unity is about so much more than having fights and disagreements in the church. Unity is about working together toward a common goal. Neighborhood Church has a mission and the work we must do will require that we all row together. Disunity in most congregations occurs because they forget their true mission, the mission to share the gospel to the world. The strength of any congregation can be determined by the depth of unity they embrace. Unity is all about mission, while disunity is all about chaos and schism. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. We all must make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. These are high sounding words, but some congregants can feel that they have no value or position on the rowing team. I can hear them say, I don't feel like I'm a fellow rower pursuing the mission of God. I don't have a ministry and I don't have a place of service in our congregation. All I do is sit in my seat and attend church. You tell me that I have been given grace by Christ to serve in the body of Christ, but I don't seem to have any abilities that are useful. These might be the thoughts and actions of many members in local congregations. John Milton, an English poet 
and author of Paradise Lost in 1655, gradually went blind and lost his ability to write. He discovered something very important during these dark days. He said, They also serve who only stand and wait. You might be the disciple who only sits and waits for your calling, but never lose sight of the fact that you are part of the rowing team and we are all on our mission together. We are all part of a team here at Neighborhood Church. We are part of the whole body of Christ. We are held together by every supporting member, growing and building ourselves up in love as each part does its work. For him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. At Neighborhood Church, we exist to help people experience Jesus and engage in spiritual growth. Our mission is to employ the love of God into the world. Unity is about effectiveness. Those who rode together arrive at the goal faster and easier. On a Roman galley, the under rower was not the only mode of propulsion. The ship had sails. The under rowers were about the precise maneuvering required in a battle situation. Wind can take you a long distance with less effort, but it can only take you forward. The Roman galley has no precision of attack with sails only. The under rowers engaged their oars when it's time to engage battle. They could easily go forward, backward, left or right, or ram another boat on command. The more the rowers worked together, the more effective they were in maneuvering. Should you want to survive a sea battle on a Roman galley, all under rowers must row together or all will die together. We read, in Ephesians that Jesus Christ gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of men in their deceitful scheming. Paul is essentially up at the whiteboard, drawing up the play for the church to be the most effective in this world. Spiritual immaturity is frustrating the mission of the church. We are caught up by cultural pressures and petty debates. Paul is acting like a coach, teaching the game plan on how we are supposed to work together as a team. A perfect example of these frustrations can be seen in youth sports. Nothing is more frustrating for a coach than the team he or she has prepared fails to perform during the game. 
One player says, Coach, I have a friend's birthday party to go to, while another player freezes with fear while on the field. What about the player who frustrates the team because he or she is a ball hog? Or the teammates who come only for the snacks? The problem we have is that the church views itself more as a social gathering than an army fighting the darkness of the world. We must work together to reestablish kingdom boundaries. The effectiveness of the church is not in trouble because the gospel is not relevant to today's world. It's in trouble because we are not following the game plan of the coach. We allow our political and social position to frustrate our spiritual mission. Unity is about submission. When a leader is clearly identified, then our rowing is effective. In the Roman galley, the under rowers would follow the beat of the drummer who followed the orders of the captain. The power of unity is when several people come together to accomplish one thing as effectively as possible. Consider for a moment the phenomenal aerial acrobatics being performed by the legendary Blue Angels, a United States Navy flight demonstration squadron who fly at hundreds of miles per hour, wingtip to wingtip, in perfect unison. This type of precision could only occur with all pilots rowing together as a cohesive unit. Should one pilot decide not to be part of the team, then death would occur. We can use this example to describe the unity needed in our local congregations. The power of the church is realized when we give ourselves to one heart and to one mind in seeking God's kingdom established here on earth. The church cannot be effective if they have forgotten who the leader is and the life he has called us to. Let's make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. These words of Paul are sobering. They make unity our personal responsibility, not just the duty of the pastor. Each one of us must strive to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. We are glad you joined us at Neighborhood Church. Let's work together to blend the perfect smoothie for our community. We have a call and a mission that can only be accomplished by all of us rowing together to the heartbeat of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.